Do you struggle to get a data job no matter how hard you try? Constantly reformatting your resume, wasting hours interviewing with disappointing follow-up? You're constantly hearing about recruiters poaching other data professionals? Everyone's saying it's a hot market, but you're having a hard time breaking into the companies that you desire. The problem is most likely that your resume, your interviewing, and your portfolio all need to tell a cohesive story. Your story. It starts with the resume, and resumes aren't easy. Well, the first step kind of is. You need to pass an automated keyword searches. So make sure you pack the resume with all the buzzwords, names of tools and platforms for the roles you're targeting. But they need to be strategic. Don't put down everything. If you're going for a data engineering position, you should target keywords like Spark, Python, SQL, Databricks, Snowflake, Azure, AWS. You don't need Excel, Office, and Access. If you're getting the nearly immediate automated rejections, you probably need to review the keywords. That Just look at the job posting and use the same ones they use. After that, your resume will end up in the hands of someone who has about 50 resumes they skim over in 30 seconds. This person may or may not know anything about the position you're applying for. When it comes to format, font sizes, some color or no color, skill list at the top, bottom, or not at all, education at the top or bottom, anyone who tells you the right way is lying because everyone has a different opinion and you don't know which opinion the person reading the resume will have. Just make sure it's readable, plenty of white space and a standard font. You've probably spent too much time changing the things outside of your control and not solving the actual reason your resume sucks. Does the resume tell a story? If you just have job titles and a list of responsibilities that look like it's ripped directly from a job posting, that's a pretty painful read. Same if you just have a dry listing of projects. Let's start with some progression. If you have five jobs listed and they all say data analyst, that's boring, especially if the job you're going for isn't titled data analyst. Now imagine if you have some business role, then data analyst, then master's degree projects, and then data science. That looks like some progression. This is a person who's picking up skills and growing and not just working jobs. Obviously, you might not have all of these jobs to put down, but you need to figure out a way to use what you do have to show you're progressing through your career. Now for the bullet points under your jobs, don't list your responsibilities. That's boring. Highlight a handful of projects you worked on and why they were important to both you and the company. For example, transferred ETL from SSIS to a streamlined cloud Python and SQL ELT approach, significantly reducing efforts to troubleshoot and implement new pipelines. This shows how you provided value to that company and its potential value to the new company as many are trying to get off of on-prem solutions. It shows your ability to take an existing process and move it to a new one. And more importantly, it leaves them with some questions. I wonder how they did that. I wonder what the new process entailed. I wonder what cloud platform they used. If a 30 second skim of the resume leaves them wanting to ask you questions, that's pretty much a guaranteed interview. Just like the job titles, the details underneath each should show progress. Advancing in technology and responsibilities as you move from job to job. Also make sure you're mixing technical skills with business value or overcoming obstacles. You want the story to show you have the business skills to see a gap, the technical skills to solve it, and the soft skills to collaborate and get it done. Now, if you're lacking professional experience, the resume will work the same way. You just need to be replacing things with your personal projects. Just like you don't want a boring list of job responsibilities, you don't want a boring list of overdone internet projects. Think about a problem and come up with a solution for it either a pipeline for data engineering or an analytical problem for data science. It's important to think about how this is a solution to a problem. How would you sell this if you could? There's a million projects you can do that are kind of cool, but don't really help anyone with anything. Remember the story you're telling and how you can help this company solve its problems. The great thing about building your resume this way is you've also just done your interview preparation. When they open with a, tell me about yourself, you roll through that high level list of job titles that tells the story of how you've grown through your career. Now, hopefully your resume has done its job in guiding them to ask questions and details about your work. And since the bullet points you've listed have already been thought out of as a story, you should be able to easily jump into a detailed explanation of what you did, why you did it, challenges you faced, and solutions you came up with. The other type of question you'll get are the, here's our problem, how would you solve it? And just like a good politician, you want to redirect their question to an answer involving one of your story bullet points. Oh, it sounds like you're struggling to get your cloud platform to do what you need it to. Well, let me tell you about the time I transferred our entire ETL process from SSIS to an AWS Python solution. Then just highlight your AWS learnings. 
I pretty much go into interviews with about six to eight good story examples on my resume, and then I will answer 90% of the questions they ask with those six to eight items. The rest of the time, I either remember something more fitting, or I'm just stumped and fail to redirect it back to my examples. But through this process, you're hopefully showing you are more than a list of skills and job responsibilities, that you've been growing and are a valuable asset. And honestly, just that you aren't a boring resume to read and a boring person to talk to. Remember these are people and people love a good story. If you're one of the people with a very skills and tech heavy resume, you'll wanna watch this video to help you show that you are a valuable asset to a company and really tell the story of how your technical skills can solve their business problems.